today's video, I'm going to be showing you an extreme 3D moth, and I have done so many of these extreme over-the-top bugs where their wings come up off the nail, and I've never done a moth. I usually go for something a little bit more uh, colorful, like a butterfly or a jewel beetle or a bumblebee, just something with a little bit more, like I said, a little more colorful. I'm a colorful person. But I decided, you know what, I actually really enjoy visually what moths look like. They've got the beautiful spots on their wings and they've got the furry little body. I love it. I hope you guys like it as much as I do. And don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. We are going to begin by creating a very nice ombre in the background of a dark green to a lighter green. And I wouldn't choose anything too neon or too bright. A moth isn't an overly showy creature, so we want colors that are a little bit more neutral, very earthy in the background. Not brown, so we want the moth to still show up against the background. But then encapsulate the nail with a layer of clear acrylic, really add some strength to it, and it will protect the slight glitter shimmer that is in both of these green colors that I'm using. And after that has been cured completely, we're going to be filing it into shape with our e-file, smoothing it all out, making a perfect little base for our our extreme little moth. After you have that all done, you can set to the side and we can start making our moth. So using a piece of scratch paper, we're going to be making a template. So you're going to sculpt the two pieces of the wing for one side and then use a pen that'll show through the paper, flip your paper over, and we're going to be drawing out the the mirror image of the shape that we did the first time. Then you're going to lay a nail form backing over your drawing and you're going to sculpt each wing. So you're going to have four pieces total. I'm going to be, obviously for a moth, I'm going to be using very neutral brown and tan tones. Whatever creature it is that you're sculpting in this circumstance, whether you want to do follow basically the exact same steps and make a butterfly, you just want to make sure that you remember what you do for each wing piece so that you go through and you can replicate it. If you want to do a wings like I am where you do the same step on each one, you can. Otherwise, if you want to just sculpt one wing in entirety and then go back through and do the other one, that also works. However, you feel more comfortable. If you're doing it the way that I did it, you're going to have to you know, flip your piece of paper over so that you have the mirror image. You don't want to just sculpt the wings all the same and then have to flip them over later because there's a smooth side that's going to be the side that's against nail from backing and then a slightly textured side, which is the side that you're sculpting. And it will look interesting and wrong if you just sculpt them all and as you're putting it together, one side is shiny, one side is not shiny. Once you're done with that, we're going to be sculpting the antenna. So with a different color of a tan or a brown, you're going to make just a little shape and then kind of feather out the edges. They've got very fluffy antenna. And now to actually attach this thing together, we're going to be sculpting a base for the body of our of our moth on the you know the middle of the nail. Don't make it too thick because as you're going through and you're securing the wings in place in a little bit, you're going to need to add more acrylic to it. So if you build it all the way up to the thickness you want immediately, it's going to end up too thick total. You're going to want to press those antenna into the head or set them on top with some nail glue, depending on if that acrylic is cured or not. And then after you have the antenna in place, you can go through and glue the pieces of the wing. After you glue just the very end of the wing down, you're going to want to use a tool of some sort or your finger, something to prop it up so that it has an angle to it so it's not laying flat. You want the wings to just have sort of a slight subtle angle. I personally think my finger is the best thing to use for this. If you are working on a client, you will almost definitely need to use your finger just so that it has kind of a good, you're holding their finger in place as you're using your finger to support the wing. It's a multitasking situation very doable, but you will probably need to use your finger. If this is a practice nail like mine is, you could maybe set the nail on the table and then use something like a tweezers or a, a nail clippers on the side to prop up the wing if you don't want to use your hand. And then after you have those wings and the glue has grabbed so that you can, you know, let go of using them as a prop, then you can take and you can secure the wings in place, add more depth to the shape of the head, add more depth to the body, add more height to everything, round it all out, basically add whatever finishing details you need and whatever kind of color combination you want to use for your moth you can so my antenna are a different color from the body and an, and a different color from the wings everything is its own shade of brown or tan you know they're all kind of in that muted tan color sort of a sort of a situation and you can do all of that with acrylic otherwise you can add as much detail as you'd like with acrylic paint so a lot of my detail is going to be added now with paint I'm going to be adding just some highlights and some shadows, some details with white and black and a couple different colors of brown. There are very 
there are so many different combinations of patterning that you can find on a moth. So when you're going to go to do this, you can either replicate what I did and just follow along and you can watch what I do and just do the same thing. Or even better, you can take a minute and you can look at moth images on the internet. There are so many and there are so many patterns and so many color combinations. Some of them have just a little bit of color mixed in, just like a little sheen to them or, you know, just like a spot that's colored. There's just so many different opportunities and so many different combinations that you could do that you can find one that you really, really like and you can do that one instead. So if you're going to go through and you're going to do this, have some fun and and just decide what kind of a moth it is that you you want to do because there are a lot of different ones out there so the one that i'm doing has two eye spots on well one eye spot on each of the upper wings so we're going to be adding those they're a little darker on the outside a little brighter on the inside i'm going to add some white within the brighter area again so many different things a little bit of a black line that actually reminds me a lot of the eyes on the peacock feathers just the way that the different colors go in the layers of them and the eye spots. I think that's what really attracted me to this particular moth was just that, the way the eye spot looked. And we're going to be adding very few little details with black, not trying to overdo it, but just kind of do a couple little lines here and there, add darker eye spots on the lower wings, and then fill those in too, bright white in the center. They're just so cool. I So like I said, I really do love moths. I think that they're such an, a crucial part of our ecosystem and they're not very well represented. You see butterfly stuff all over the place, but a lot of people have kind of a ew mentality towards a moth. And so, I don't know. I like to spread awareness about the underdogs sometimes. So we're going to apply some gel top coat over the background. It'll really make that subtle shimmer in the green just glow. I'm going to add a little more detail to my moth's face, which for some reason I forgot to do before. And then I'm going to apply some matte top coat over everything that has acrylic paint on it. And then using some gel sealer, I'm going to apply just a little bit to the base of each wing. And then using a tweezer, I'm going to very carefully place some brown flocking powder into that wet top coat. So as I'm placing this, like I said, I'm doing it very carefully, doing just little bits, trying to control exactly where I get it. I have two colors of brown that I'm going to be using, a darker, more like mahogany color, and then almost a golden brown. And I'm going to be using a combination of both across the moth on the wings and on the body just to kind of get a good little combination. I'm going to cure the flocking powder that's on the wings, and then I'm going to go through with the same two colors. I'm going to be adding some detail to the body as well carefully placing it if you have a little pointy tweezers that is the best tool for this job and you can really get some you know some coloring and some detail done just with the flocking powder fill in the rest of the space with the lighter color after it's been cured dust off any extra and then here it is it's all done it is so cool if you missed any of my past bugs creepy crawlies butterflies etc i'll put links to them in the description box below and here is a melody minutes Hi, dear world. What did you say? Hi, dear world. Hi, dear world? Yeah. That's pretty good. That's a good one. Can you just say hi, though, this time? Hi. Okay, can you say happy Earth Day? What? Happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day. Happy Earth Day, everybody. In today's video, we are... Earth Day. <laughs> what were you going to say? Hey. <laughs> normal little girl. Hello! I hope those brought a smile to your face and I'll see you all next time. Bye!